Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at an example of the linearity property of a Fourier transform. Here again we repeated the property that if we have the Fourier transform where we're trying to take the Fourier transform of two separate input functions, each multiplied times a constant, you can see that that constant simply is multiplied by the Fourier transform of each of the separate functions. Now what is the input function is the sine of omega sub naught t. At first you may say, well, that's only a single input function, but if we rewrite that function in this format, then you can see it becomes two separate functions, each multiplied by 1 over 2i. So in this case, the constants a1 and a2 happen to be the same constant, so we could essentially factor it out. So if we take the Fourier transform of the first input function and the second input function, notice we have a negative sign here because there's a negative sign there, then the result will look like this. We can factor out the constant, we'll call it 1 over 2j. i and j are essentially the same, except we tend to use j when we're in the, the frequency domain. We tend to use i when we're in the time domain. And uh, notice here we have the Fourier transform of the first input function minus the Fourier transform of the second input function. Now when we look at those, something should look familiar. If you go back to video number 15, that's where we learned that the Fourier transform of the input function e to the i omega t is equal to 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught. Applying that, we can then find the, easily find the Fourier transform of each of these two. And so then we get the following. This would become equal to 1 over 2j times and the first input function then re uh, reverses 2, or we take the Fourier transform, we get 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught. That's because we have a positive i omega sub naught t, and then it will be minus 2 pi times the delta function of omega plus omega sub naught, because we have a minus over here. So to simplify this, what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by j. So this becomes equal to j divided by 2j times j. And then we're also going to pull out a 2 pi. So multiply this times 2 pi. And then what we have here is a delta function. And of course, j times j, well, that's equal to negative 1. We can bring that up here. And the 2 and the 2s cancel. So that gives us equal to a minus j pi and then times the delta function. And finally, if we want to get rid of this negative sign, we can multiply this and this by negative sign, simply then reverse order. And so this can then be j times pi times. So this will become positive. We'll put it in the front delta of omega plus omega sub naught. And this will become a minus delta times omega minus omega sub so naught. Like this. And then this would be the Fourier transform of the sine of omega t. Notice how nice that linearity property helps us set up in a format that we can apply what we've learned in video 15. And before you know it, voila, there's your Fourier transform. It's not so hard when you can use these little tricks. And that's how it's done.